I'm Garrett, CEO of IDC Woodcraft. IDC Woodcraft is the company you get your CNC router bits from. In this video, we are going to cover two functions in the Vectric software. I'm going to dive deep into the rotate function so you know how to have total control over the rotation feature. And the second one is a little thing that I just discovered the other day, even as a well-versed Vectric user that I didn't even know existed. So we'll get into that one after we go into the rotate feature. So let's do that. That. idcwoodcraft.com I am using Vectric VCarve Pro version 12. Now, what I'm going to show you with the rotate feature and this other feature are available in all the variants of the Vectric software, and it goes back through the versions, uh, I don't know, back to five maybe. But uh, for most users, you have all these tools that I'm going to show you. So we'll do the rotate, and then we're going to do this little unknown trick. Okay, so I've created this amazing rectangle that I'm going to carve out on my CNC router. And most of you already know that you can select an item and then click it again and these beads will show up and you can do little things with the beads. The little side beads will expand the, your items. The lower beads will expand the other way. And if you hold the shift button down, <clears throat> you can expand them equilaterally. And same thing with the little white beads in the corner. But you, oops, let's grab that white bead. There we go. Just like that. And hold the shift button down and it goes equilaterally. So you also know that these little blue buttons on the out side four corners are rotate buttons and when you click and hold them with your left mouse button you get this little rotate icon around your thing and you can move your mouse and the item will rotate as you wish and you can drop it wherever you want and it's going to rotate about the center of the project or the selected item so i've got this little bead in the middle right there and that's what it is rotating around so I'll move it around like that, and we can do that all day long. I'm going to hit Control z twice to get that straightened back out. We're going to dive into the rotate function in the Vectric software, so I can show you how you can have a lot more control over the rotate features. Now, there's two ways to get into the rotate function in the software. Number one is go over to the Transform Objects area, and usually the third icon in when you hover over it, it's got this, it says Rotate Selected objects and it's got this little plus looking thing when you select that the rotate menu opens up now we're going to close this because i'm going to show you the other way the rotate feature comes on i'm s simply going to make sure my object is selected and then hit the keyboard shortcut the letter r for rotate and now our rotate feature is turned on and the rotate command is turned on. But you notice there's something a little bit different here. There's this little donut right in the middle of the project where that plus was. What that rotate thing is, or what, what that donut is, is it is the point of rotation. So right now, if I just grab a blue bead and rotate it, I can rotate about center. But you notice now there's a little plus in the middle of the project because that's telling me where the rotate point is. Now, I'm going to let that go and hit Control z and that donut is now gone. And when I try to rotate again, no plus shows up. I'm going to Control z that again, and we need to get this plus back, well, or this donut back. So, this, what is this donut? Where is this coming from? If you go over to your Rotate menu, you have a very familiar four-point corner with radio buttons along the outside and a selector on the inside. Now we have rotated that once and the donut goes away. But if we click on one of these radio buttons again, that donut comes back. And now we can get full control of our rotation. Now we can actually control the actual point at which it's going to rotate. I told you that, ro that donut is the point of rotation. When that's there, you can hover your mouse right over that donut 
and you get the little cursor with the arrows going up and down and side to side and that's indicating that you can move something which is the donut that we have selected so i'm going to hold my left mouse button down and drag now i have a hold of that little donut which is the rotate uh center of center of rotation indicator and i'm going to move it right up to the corner my cursor is going to snap there and i've let it go and now we've created our center of rotation around that point right there so now if i grab any one of these blue dots the project is going to rotate about that corner and you see that little plus is at the upper left corner of the rectangle now once i let that go the donut is still there now let's just click off of this item and then re-click back onto it and the donut still hangs out there now here's something that's a little weird we've rotated it to some random point what if I decide I want this, this donut? Well, we're going to back up. I'm going to just hit Control Z, and we're going to move this point of rotation down to the lower corner first. And the way we do that is come over to these little radio button selectors, and you notice there's, that was clicked, but it's no longer clicked. This one is clicked. Use coordinates. I'll explain that one in the middle, in a minute. But we want to hit this little lower left button, and I click that, and now the donut has now shifted down to the bottom and our center of rotation now is at the bottom of the rectangle, the lower left corner. I'm going to control Z that again and now we want to move this somewhere else completely. What if I want to move this donut all the way down to my XY zero point and have that my point of rotation? Well, that's where these use coordinates buttons comes in at. You notice right now it is selected. Even though we selected this lower left corner, it said use coordinate, it is automatically switched to use coordinates. And that's because it just does that. I don't know why it does that because, um, we're in the use coordinates function. If I could just click out of that, we are now still in the lower left corner of the project and I can still move it up and down. Now, if I click off of it and go back into rotate function, oops, I have to select the item. And now we go back up to there and it says use coordinates again. So what's going on here? Well, the software is just interpreting rotate as it understands this particular aspect. I don't really understand. It should be the lower left corner of the rectangle, and yet it is switched to use coordinates. So that's just a little something to be aware of. I'm going to hit Control Z to unrotate that, bring it back to the 90 degree mark, and now we're going to play with the use coordinates. I want to move the rotate point down to the X, Y, 0 position, and so we do that by entering these numbers here. I'm going to put 0 here, and you notice now the donut has moved down to the lower left corner. And what this gives you the, the power to do is you can move that point of rotation uh, relative to anywhere. If there's some other item on the screen, I can simply click there. No, I can't. Um, I have to grab the donut and bring it up until it snaps into some location like that. And then we see the use coordinates has moved, changed to uh, whatever location that is at relative to the X, Y, zero. We're gonna go back to that zero point Enter, and now our center of rotation is around the lower left corner of the project. So we're going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to go back to the center of the project as our uh, rotation point. So we simply come back into this little uh, rectangle with the five radio buttons, select the one in the center, and now that donut is in the middle again, and that is our new point of rotation. So you can always move that point of rotation whenever you want. I'm going to hit Control Z to bring that back. Now we want to rotate relative to something else. So I'm going to change this back. I'm going to Go to Use Coordinates. I'm going to grab the donut, and I'm just going to bring it all the way over to the edge of the project, and I'm going to let it snap to the uh, Y-axis and the center of the rectangle, and let it go. That's our rotate point. I'm going to zoom that out just a little bit and move it up. No, I'll just put it in the center. Now, there's another way we can rotate this is by using the type of rotation. We can select absolute, and then we put in a number. Right now, it's at zero. Let's say we want to rotate it minus 45. I'm going to just type in minus 45 and click apply, and now it has rotated 
45 degrees in the negative direction relative to that rotation point. Now, what if I wanted to go another four degrees? Well, then I can rotate it relative to that. If I wanted to go four more degrees, I can't just punch in a number minus four and have it go more, four, more than four degrees when it's on absolute. When I do that, watch what the rectangle does. It's going to shift back up to four degrees. We're going to hit control Z, so we're back at 45 degrees. I'm going to click the relative button and type in minus four and then click apply and now it's going to shift another four degrees just like that so what happens with the absolute absolute always bases it off of its original orientation and if you type in 45 degrees it'll rotate 45 degrees but if you want it to go another five degrees you have to type in 50 degrees when you're on the absolute whereas relative is relative from to wherever it's rotated at uh, then you can go another five degrees from there so that is like full control over this rotate feature that um, it's just a little more advanced you don't use it all that much but that's uh, that's uh, how you work with this now um, we're going to dive into this other little trick that I didn't know until about uh, two days ago, and most Vectric users don't know that. Uh, before we do, I just want to let you know the IDC Woodcraft caps are now in and available on the IDC Woodcraft website. I'll link that down below. And if this gave you some understanding of the rotate feature, then certainly go and practice it and give me a thumbs up and a comment down below if I missed something on this rotate thing. All right, this other thing I'm going to be showing you is how you can take wonky lines and straighten them out in a very easy way. And I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go to this other design that I made, pretty amazing project right here, that's really messed up. But I want to turn this into a cross. I don't know how to do that other than by redrawing it or clicking on it and hitting the letter N for node to bring up the nodes and start dragging these nodes around until they almost line up but there is another way to do this I can select these nodes and then just let's say oops I want these four points right here to be completely straight across with the x-axis so what I can do is select those four nodes when I hover over all of them the nodes turn red and then I can click the button X on the keyboard and that Oops, control Z. I needed to hit the button Y on the Z board, keyboard, Z board, Y, and that straightened that out. And then I can do this one right here. These two, I'm going to hit X, and it's going to straighten that up. And then I can click these and hit Y and straighten that up. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. Now what if I want them to straighten up relative to this point right here, this particular node? Then what I'm going to do is click that node, hold my shift button down, and select that node, and then we'll window around these other two nodes, and then we'll hit Y, and you're going to see these lines will create themselves or adjust themselves based on the, this Y position of that node. I hit that, and now let's straighten that out. And I can do the same with these nodes right here. I'm just going to straighten them out in X, and they will all line up. And it's such a fast way of doing it. I'm going to do the upper two. I'm going to just go Y. And then for these lower two, I well, I have to straighten this one up a little bit. So we're going to select that, and I'm going to hit X. And then I want these last two, and I want it based off of the position of this bottom node. So I'm going to just select that, hold shift button down, select that one, and hit Y. Oop, control Z, hit X. A little bit backwards on that. I've got to do that again. Select that, hold shift down, and then hit X. Control Z. I think I'm selecting the wrong ones. Shift there, and hit Y, and there it's straightened out. So we got one more right here. And I'm going to go X. So what these are doing is they are straightening out relative to the axis that it's moving along that way. So I'm going to grab that line right there. 
and I just hit that pick point, so I don't want that. In case you didn't know, when you are in node mode and there is a straight line, there's going to be this little pick point right in the middle. You can grab that pick point and pull it out, and now you've created another node. I'm going to control Z that. It still leaves that node in place, but it's there now. So what I have to do is I have to select these these three, I've selected these three, they're now red, and now I can hover over that line. I should be able to pull that line. I have to do that one more time, and I can only pull that line. So anyway, that's not working out as well as I want it to work out. So I'm not sure why it's not locking in with all three of those. So it's like this here. Let's see if I can do something with that. There we go. Now that one is staying straight. Okay, so it's just the lines between the nodes that you can only do that to. If you have nodes over here, uh, if you grab the line here and you've got another node that you or another line you want to move with it, you can't do it. It's only going to grab the line between two nodes. So now I got to straighten that one back out and this one back out. So I'm going to select those three. I'm going to hit the X because I need to straighten out that way. So I think X is the one, and then this one here. I want it all straightened out, so I'm just going to grab all four of those, hit the Y, and they're straightened out. And now I can click that, and we have done it. So it's a little tool that we don't use that much, but it's a, just a different kind of tool. So if this was helpful, then give me a thumbs up. Uh, maybe we'll be able to, you'll be able to use that. Give me a comment down below and tell me how you can use that little trick. It's a neat little trick, but it was a very unknown little trick. And I don't know how to use it yet. So leave me a comment. Tell me how to use that. With that, remember, IDC Woodcraft ball caps are now available. Let people know you are a creator. IDCWoodcraft.com